now what is going on you guys welcome back to another update here in the sergeant tank fish room my name is jeremy thanks so much for stopping by if you guys were here yesterday for a quick update we have our very large uh, annual auction here in the grand rapids michigan market tomorrow a lot of information has already been out there through social media with that regard so i don't have anything for you guys with regard to information but if you're watching this in the replay or if you have interest in that go over to the sergeant tank facebook group and in the events uh portion of that group we'll lay out everything with regard to address times what you need to do that type of stuff so it kicks off tomorrow at 9 30 a.m eastern standard time uh, as pre-registration the actual auction will begin at 11 a.m so i did a quick few minute update yesterday just reminding everybody and put it out here on youtube and I did mention I wasn't planning on doing a live stream. However, I have my son here behind the camera and I uh, wouldn't be able to do this unless he was there um, holding the camera for me. So I figured it was a good opportunity to kind of bring this a little bit more back, um, old school style uh, with that regard. And I'm gonna show you a little bit as far as the process that we go through here when it comes to preparation. And a lot of the same basis behind, even though I've done very elaborate in-depth on multiple occasions, not only through live streams, but also uh, uploaded, edited videos when it comes to shipping of livestock. We've been shipping myself for over a decade uh, with regard to livestock. So some of the same principles and practices that I'll walk through with you guys here over the next few minutes, we'll be pointing out some of that leading up to the point before you would actually package it up, put it in the box. And of course, all that's very critical as well. But you guys will pretty much see everything up to the point of not actually putting it in, you know, styro line type of boxes and dropping off the post office, if that makes sense. So if you guys are into that thing, definitely hang around, um, kick back, grab a beverage and a snack, and we'll just kind of hang out here uh, for a little while and uh, we'll go through some of this stuff. And if you guys have questions for me uh, with anything that I'm showing you, uh, feel free to go ahead and uh, let us know and I will do my best in order to address that. So the first thing that you can see here, if we focus the camera at some of these labels, um, these are actually pre-printed labels. Um, so most clubs that you go through will have some form of a label system and some are more digital, some are uh, more advanced uh, with that to, uh, from that point of view. Uh, these are basic bag labels, which would consist of a seller ID, it would consist of your name, uh, contact information, and whatever the species and common name, and then the quantity uh, would be, and then that would actually go on the, on the package itself. And uh, you guys will see a little bit more of that here in a few minutes. If we head back over here uh, to where we actually have some of the species being maintained. So this is a 100 gallon uh, stock system that's on a continuous um, drip system. So I'm constantly changing through uh, filter process uh, through a carbon block system. I'm constantly changing water. So what I do is everything is being conditionally um, uh, getting ready uh, with regard to actually bringing it. So the same principle, let's back up here. So the same practices that I follow when it comes to shipping is the exact same thing that I do when it comes to uh, transferring a fish, if it comes to bringing fish to uh, a type of auction, a swap meet, a convention, whatever that case may be, it's exactly the same protocol that I follow. I condition everything, I put everything to a detoxing phase or an observation phase. Uh, we have an Amica Splendens here that I will not be bringing. Uh, I've identified some issues here uh, where I just don't feel comfortable bringing it and I would advise anybody do that. Um, nothing major, but it's just something I need to keep under observation myself a little bit longer before I'm going to provide anything like that because the most important thing here to us, where our reputation is, is not only from the standpoint of shipping, what we're probably most known for, but it's also good capitally bred, capitally conditioned and raised different various species of fish. Pretty much we've already have certain things established, so you guys are actually seeing um, this a little bit ahead now because I've already actually prepared some of the things getting ready uh, to go into bags and we'll take a look back at that over at the processing table. Every one of these breeder boxes have gone through uh, daily water changes of 50%. So these are not on, on continuous uh, drip systems. So we have some shrimp, uh, we have some endlers, uh, we have uh, some 
Toreadoras, we also have some Pelvic Chromos Falker, and we have some Lusa Penis. So each one of these will also be all gone. Every one of these here, hang on breeder boxes, will be going into auction, um, depending on what it is that uh, is contained in species wise. Uh, so we pretty much have everything here that I need besides uh, we have some juvenile Pelvic Chromos Falker, and then I also have uh, two male Funnel of Penchase Garderi. Uh, your blue uh, leer tail variety of your killifish. So those will have to get bagged yet. Mika Swenin's male will not be bagged. The Limia vitata, this group is going to be going back into a different ecosystem. Uh, they're just in here temporarily. Um, and uh, yeah, so why don't we go ahead and get back over the processing table. Um, let me know if there's any questions that come in and then uh, I'll do my best in order to uh, forgive any of the um, semi clutter that we have going on here in the background. Uh, this is an organized chaos uh, right now. So it works, it gets the job done. So each one of these contains various size bags. Um, I use a minimum of two mil bags up to four mil bags. And uh, depending on what species it is, how I'm going to do it, I'm not going to go into all of the bases behind shipping. A lot of the stuff that you will see here uh, in the next few minutes will be uh, very similar to shipping process. However, there it is a little bit more elaborative and in-depth. And I'm not going to spend that time today doing that because I do have very in-depth videos already on the platform. Is there any questions at all? Um, Before we kind of go any further? What's your method for equipment clean? How do you avoid cross-contamination? by Mr. B's Fish of Dayton. All right, so as far as cross-contaminants, that's a great question. Um, I'm actually going to be doing an article um, and eventually find, uh, probably a, a, a blog style type posting on our website with a lot of the information uh, with, the, with the importance of certain methodology when it comes to uh, basis behind different aspects of the um, home aquaria. Uh, freshwater specifically in the hobby and when it comes to cross contaminants we keep everything separated so there's always a gap in between each one of the ecosystems whatever tank that may be you always keep a certain gap not only for possible jumping but the other thing when it comes to redundancy and I've talked about this a little bit before on live streams is anything that I have with regard to redundancy so if I have a species in system A I'm going to have a different species in system B. So what that will do is don't keep, um, kind of like the, the phrase, don't keep all your eggs in one basket. Same principle would apply here within our fish room. So throughout three fish rooms, 110 active systems, anywhere from two and a half gallon, 300 gallon systems, is we maintain, um, and this just comes with experience. You don't learn these things right away. It really comes down to hands-on practicality, hands-on experience. So let's say over in fish room one, uh, where we have some shrimp, let's say, I'm just using this as an example. Let's say we got shrimp over there, same lineage. I'll also maintain shrimp here, let's say in this rack system. And then again, I always maintain at least three of that same lineage in that same species, no matter if it's import or if it's a fish. And the reason I don't keep all of them on the same rack system, specifically with shrimp and even with fish, is certain cross contaminants that can happen uh, between fish and shrimp, uh, a lot of the diseases um, with shrimp specifically can't necessarily um, exist necessarily with, with fish and, and vice versa. So that's why I wouldn't recommend putting all of your shrimp breeding on one system. Uh, redundancy, it, it kind of defeats the purpose of redundancy because if you keep everything and if there is a potential of a cross contaminant, whatever that may be, um, could be uh, more airborne, it could be a, an issue as far as a contaminant within the, the system itself and somehow it transfers. That's why I disperse things um, and keep them in different areas if that makes sense. Now as far as sanitizing, what we do with that regard is um, this is white distilled vinegar in a spray bottle. I find that this works phenomenally well. Um, so what I'll do is I'll take a net, let's say I utilize this net I spray everything off just like that. I'm actually even getting my hand too. It's a natural way. And what's nice about this is, believe it or not, you guys might think I'm crazy. But I can promise you one thing. 
is even though that this isn't dry, I stick this right in here. Now, if I was using some sort of chemical or even bleach, that's not gonna happen. Bleach is a common practice that you'll see across the platform. It's been utilized for decades upon decades, something I've used to use, use as well, versus utilizing like a methylene blue, a malachite green, another form of um, more of a, a potent chemical that you would actually dip your nets in. And there's various ones, you could do the same thing with bleach. I wouldn't do that though with those other ones. I, I can tell you just through actual experience, a little bit of residual vinegar isn't gonna hurt anything um, in a large system like this. So the reason I use this 100 gallon designated stock system is it conditions everything to detoxify it because I'm constantly changing water and the species that I'm showing you guys here today can all be used from the same water source. So the, the basis behind not only detoxing, conditioning, observation, uh, and then overall matching the specific water parameters that I'm looking for. Now, if it's something that requires more uh, neutral or more slightly acidic pH, then I would follow a little bit different system. However, most of the stuff, as you guys have been following me for any period of time, I'm a firm believer that you can condition just about anything over certain generational breeding in order to be able to um, adapt to what water parameters you need them to. And if you guys want to know more specifically water parameters and numbers, then check us out at sergeanttank.com and look under the about section of the website. And that will explain everything there with regard to specifically what our numbers are, how we, you know, what we go through and that type of stuff. So great question though. Hopefully that uh, kind of sums it up. Any other questions? Sure. All right, so we already have one here bag. So these are your Ancestrous uh, species bristlenose. Uh, there's a group of uh, eight juveniles. And then if you notice any white uh, in there, that's this uh, pyrogen. I talked about that before. Uh, it's a great detoxifier. It actually stabilizes it um, in order to detoxify the certain ammonia levels to keep everything in balance. Um, so that is what I actually utilize uh, when it comes to shipping. I don't uh, believe in using any type of chemical. I don't think it's necessary whatsoever. And most of the stuff that I ship, even sensitive species, because I'm comfortable and confident uh, with that regard, and I think that really just backs that particular individual up, especially when you're on social media and kind of putting yourself out there to everybody in the world, is you have to have confidence behind what you're doing, uh, spe specifically when it comes to, to shipping. It takes a lot of time. Uh, there really isn't much money in it, to be honest with you. So obviously it's not a money thing for me. I uh, lose more money when it comes to shipping out fish than, than what I'm actually gaining. Um, but I'm a hobbyist first and foremost at heart. Uh, that's what it's about for me right now is just kind of develop reputation let people know um, that i'm not afraid to be transparent i'm not afraid to let people know uh, behind the scenes stuff as this uh, because there is nothing to hide uh, the problem is that there's too many folks through social media that show bits and pieces they never do follow-ups that's why i'm bringing it back old school and what i really think people gravitated towards me here on Sergeant Tank on the YouTube channel is due to the fact that I was very transparent. I used to do a lot of these. Um, yeah, the video, the audio maybe wasn't the greatest. Hopefully it's a little bit better now. If not, the most important thing to me is being transparent and ultimately giving you guys the information, hopefully, that you can learn something from. It. So what I'm going to do here, this is a male um, another um, ancestress, uh, Bushinos pleco or Bristlenose pleco, same thing. And I always see that that question too. Um, people always get confused between the two, thinking that they're different. And it's, just, it's a different name that was given. Um, I could go a little bit more technical, uh, but um, anyway. So you'll see here in U.S. measurement. Um, it's about two cups, and that's what I'm comfortable with. And then the bags that I'll utilize for these guys um, is going to be, I usually like to use the 
um, between the 4x20s, 4x16s, and now for larger guys like this, I don't have the size I need, so I'm going to have to um, utilize these bags here. But So yeah, these are a little bit thicker. Uh, you typically don't have to worry about wrist and nose puncturing the bag. Uh, now when you're dealing with some hype and citrus lines or uh, certain other catfish, uh, then you do have to take a little bit different approach. And I just sent out a group of uh, 333s. Um, um, the King Tiger variety of your hype and citrus uh, a little over a week ago. And uh, that, that method was different than what I've shown here. Uh, it's a little bit more in depth to you're still utilizing bags. However, um, the, the tip that I have, and I don't have it by me, is actually the aluminum um, duct foil type that you would actually utilize in air ducts in order to prevent air leakage. Um, and then you would actually wrap the bags um, up to, let's say, this, this point, hypothetically, and then uh, you'll go ahead and double triple bag and what that does is that provides that added barrier uh, when they end up because I can almost guarantee you uh, that they'll end up puncturing the bag and what it does is it will keep it confined so but actually let's go with the 20s all right so here like I said this isn't the most ideal because I did run out of uh, the bag that I'm looking for but this is feasible um, the, the most important thing is air ratio a lot of times people get freaked out uh, when they see um, when they see uh, uh, water um, like let's say they get a larger cichlid or something like that and the cichlid's kind of laying on its side as long as that water comes up about a half inch above the dorsal, then you're fine. Uh, you don't need a ton of water. The most important thing is air. And make sure that you keep everything stabilized and detoxify. Um, and that's why it's so important to go through uh, detoxing when you're uh, prepping fish. That, that is absolutely, in the last 10 years of, of shipping and dealing with that process, that I learned uh, right away is the most important factor when it comes to that is uh, the detoxification and a lot of people unfortunately don't do it uh, and then they realize uh, I don't want to see and I've noticed other people jump on the bandwagon uh, they used to give me a hard time about it but I don't want to see when I receive fish uh, a bunch of waste production in the bag uh, and I'm talking from a hobbyist level or even a small business level like we have versus on a wholesale level where things are being imported or something like that and of course kind of apples to oranges but hopefully you guys can differentiate between uh, the two and I, I get the I get the concept of why people want to see uh, certain waste production in there because they feel like the fish has been fed and that's actually goes against and contradicts everything that I'm preaching to you guys with the importance of detoxifying and putting them through the detoxing phase uh, to ensure that you don't have those issues because ultimately you should be able to tell when you receive whatever species it is um, specifically with fish uh, of what the overall health is by looking at it I mean of course you're gonna have your normal stress and whatnot um, when it comes to that but <coughs> ultimately um, yeah so hopefully it kind of makes sense you guys have any other questions at all where do you get the fish tube shirts? All right, so this was given me, um, I was actually the first one to have this. I wasn't at the aquatic experience, but um, uh, Rob Lupton with Flip Aquatics actually brought me one. He was at our club uh, a couple of weeks weekends ago uh, talking um, about uh, shrimp and he uh, ended up surprising me and bringing me one. I didn't know that he was gonna do it, so. That's how I end up getting mine. Um, I don't know. Uh, I, I honestly don't know um, how you would get one. That I wasn't uh, expecting it, so I really can't can't say. So the other thing I want to make note of is I do like to take just a piece of tape and just kind of reinforce that bottom. 
And what this does is I'm not worried about the pinching because I've already done that with the invert. Um, and again, I explain this uh, very much great detail on the videos on the, on the, the channel. What it does is it actually kind of maintains the air within the bag by taping. I think oftentimes people think it's just, yes, the round the corners, of course, so things can't get trapped, that type of stuff. Uh, it's just as important where it actually maintains the air level. Um, and I've talked about that before uh, with the differentiation between utilizing um, pure oxygen versus just normal air uh, without using pure oxygen. So. Um, I just wanted to say that Susan put the link to your Facebook and 54 Punchy put a link to your website. And then um, Maple Street Aquatics was wondering um, if you could have a quick rundown of what you're bringing to the auction. Sure. So let's go take a look real quick. I'm not going to bore you guys with going through every single one of these. I just don't. My most important focus. Um, it's, they have been following me now on the platform for over two years. Um, is when I get my zone, the the most important thing to me is a livestock. Um, not focusing on. Uh, that's why I have him doing this. That's why I'm doing a lot of ums and ahs and pausing because I'm trying to focus on what I'm doing because I don't want to end up putting the wrong label on. Um, I just can't multitask like I used to. So the species that I'm bringing, this is kind of something here. Just don't put it over the tank. Sorry, you guys. I'm putting my hand. My son's has my $700 phone going over the stock tank, and I just don't want it falling in. Um, so this here uh, is a uh, list, and I posted this list up here so I know when I'm pulling things. I know what the quantity is. I know what it is that has to go together, if it's as a group, if it's as individual. So I'm bringing in some Ancestris, which we've already shown. Um, I'll be bringing in uh, a couple of bags of um, males, two males um, for each one of those. They'll be individually bagged, but they'll be part of the same group. And then the juvenile uh, unsexed, I'll be bringing in eight of those. And then these are your, uh, your standard brown or chocolate variety. And it looks like eight sub-adults. So they're very close to um, probably the next three or four months to start breeding. And some Neocaridinia heterocoda, which is a carbon release I've shown you guys before. I'll be bringing in some fantasy blue. So the difference between a fantasy blue and a blue dream or a fantasy blue dream is basically a cross between the two. So more of a pure lineage. Um, there's always a big misconception, but anyways, I'm not going to go on my rant. I've been keeping shrimp for 14 years. Um, Neocaridinia devidae, blue dreams are more pure lineage, so they're throwing more pure lines. Neocaridinia devidae, fantasy blue, uh, is a little bit more inconsistent as far as, uh, with regard to the offspring, so they're not going to be as pure. Uh, the Funnel of Penchex Garneri, I'll uh, be bringing in a couple of males of those. The Blue Leer Tail, uh, Pulselia Wing Eye, uh, groups of Black Bar Endlers and Lime Green Endlers. Uh, the Procabaris, uh, the Marble Soft Home Crayfish, I have one of those. It's actually my last one that I'm done. Uh, I've dealt with crayfish for 12 years. And let's see here. Um, uh, Diamond Tetra, Limia Vitata, the Synodonis lucipennis, uh, Corridoris Schultzi, black, and a male desert goby because he ended up killing my female. So, and that was quite a few months ago once I end up, and they're usually not a very difficult one to spawn, uh, but for whatever reason, um, through the enticement phase and the trigger of this spawning, they got a little too aggressive. I'll just leave it at that. But, uh, yeah, I just don't want to deal with a male, and I don't feel like getting a, a female. Uh, it was actually at the last auction. Uh, it was part of the silent auction, uh, that specific one. Was. So, with regard to what I'm bringing, uh, if you guys remember, uh, I don't remember how long ago it was, 
not a few weeks back, uh, there was another one that was about 45 minutes south of us. Another club uh, auction, their annual auction, uh, fall auction that is, and I brought a bunch of stuff there as well. So this will pretty much uh, clean up a lot of the systems and then for 2019, I'll be bringing uh, more rainbow fish, killifish, goodyids, uh, limia, uh, I'll always still keep breeding shrimp. Um, I have some different lines. Uh, I have uh, L182s, which is your Starlight, uh, your true Starlight Pleco, uh, versus like the L183, which basically loses that Starlight pattern and maintains usually the white uh, on the finish. However, for me, I really enjoy the 183s uh, personally. Those guys are getting close to breeding. Uh, I have some long fin variety, uh, Ancestrus, both albino and uh, long fin brown or chocolate. Th those guys are a breeding group that I'll be working with. Also have some super reds, um, the all short fin variety, and uh, Celestial Pearl Danios, uh, various barbs I'll be breeding, other tetras I'll be breeding. I'm trying to think what else. Um, the Celebes half beaks, uh, multi pentatus, uh, cara, severums, which I've already bred those anyways, uh, frontosa that I have growing out, uh, pelvicromus. I'll be working on different species I can obtain of those. So, and I know I'm, I'm missing other stuff. I got some Stetocranus urbani, uh, which I've already bred a bunch of those, but. Uh, we got some black rose shrimp. Uh, those uh, unfortunately don't don't breed as true, so I'm still working with that lineage. Those won't be ready probably for another year. And I got some bloody Mary shrimp, which is another Neoperidinia devidae strain. Um, those won't be ready for a few months yet. Uh, they are breeding true, but I'm still working with the line. And then other odds and ends. I'm sure there's other things I'm missing, but like I said, my, my plan will be close to 50 species for 2019. Um, let me go back a little bit. Jordan Kitchell asked if, um, did you see Eric Bedrock on Lucas's live stream to describe methylene blue as a sunlight blocker or other? Then a medi medica medication um, further said tank works about the same. Um, let me <clears throat> let me let me read that. <laughs> um, I want to make sure I get this. So that specific, I'll let you take it back over. Mm -hmm. So that specific one, no, um, I did it. I'm, I'm just not a firm uh, believer that you need those type of medications anyways. Uh, I just don't really like to rant too much. I mean, if it, as I always tell people, if it works for you, continue to work it, work with it. I'm more about looking long-term um, and uh, knowing the effects that may potentially have uh, generations down the road uh, with certain medications. But no, Duane, I didn't. I didn't see that specific one. Um, Jake Tank is Jake Tanks is asking, can I pull a better with a shrimp? Some people can get by with it, but unfortunately, Dank, you can't. Would I personally recommend it? No. Now you can keep a lot of stuff with shrimp, and of course if the ecosystem is established appropriately, you can get by, but they're still going to predate. Alright, so let's bag up uh, one more here, 
and then um, wrap up the questions. I'm not sure what we're at time-wise. Uh, 30 minutes exactly. Okay. Um, I plan on doing about an hour like I typically do. That's fine. We can still hang out. Uh, no big rush. But I'm not going to go through and spend... I didn't plan on doing that anyways. It just wouldn't be practical. Uh, it would take me hours if I uh, did it that way. These are more eight of your sister species, Brissonos. So these are your uh, chocolate strain. Uh, one of the cool things, uh, they will on some of them lose it, but on the cattle portion of the tip of my specific lineage uh, that I've been working with for, ultimately the lineage came back because I've been working, hence our logo, I've been working with Bristol for close to 14 years. Um, and a buddy of mine through the club a few months back noticed in one of my systems made note and this was an adult keep in mind the very pronounced white um tips and he's like man i remember that you know strain blah 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 black and or back you know several years ago and i was like yeah chances are I most likely acquired because he was already in it uh, before I started getting into it about a year or two before that. Uh, so chances are that's what's kind of cool is that lineage ultimately will circulate back. So, um, all right. so these are again the 4x20s. Uh, these are a 2 mil. If I can find the right ones here. So a two mil is just uh, talking about the thickness of the bag. You don't want any, especially if you're now at an auction or something like that. If it's not going to be a commute or long term, then you know you can get by. But I personally recommend nothing less than a two mil. That's why you double, triple bag. Um, ultimately, if you if you just invest in it up front, you don't have to bag as much. Even if you're planning on shipping, go with like a three or four mil bag. It's going to cost you a little bit more. But if they have it available, um, uh, that that's my recommendation personally. Um, Mr. B is asking, how do you fight humidity in fish rooms? The humidifier. Well, there's a humidifier that we have in the summertime. I don't worry about humidity during the winter um, because of our climate. Um, but other than that, yeah, I don't I don't worry about uh, humidity too much. Um, I want to have some natural humidity anyway. Just not only does it help me uh, from a health standpoint, because I've always had seasonal allergy issues, migraines, that type of stuff. So from that standpoint, uh, I personally enjoy a little bit of extra humidity versus a real just like desert air, you know, that I can't, can't deal with that. But uh, so that's why it doesn't bother me as much. I mean, in the summertime, but um, I usually maintain around 50, 60% humidity um, for pretty much all four seasons here in Michigan. Um, is the KG is asking, um, is the Bristol you sent me the chocolate variety? Yeah, well, I just call it the chocolate variety. Um, it, it's it's same thing as the, um, some people call them chocolate, some people call them brown. But, uh, yeah, it's, it, that is the same lineage, uh, Kevin. And then there, he also put, like, a chocolate emoji, so people are saying don't eat it, uh, chocolate plate go. I know it confuses a lot of people, and the problem is why it confuses. That's why I just go by species. Because, um, believe it or not, even your common even though they're usually referred to as ancestrous species brissinos, um, it goes a little bit more detailed than that. Um, and I'm not going to sit here and bore you guys with with all that. So, Dank is asking, what is your favorite killie? My favorite killie would be the uh, Funnel of Penchase Gargari, just your common blue leer tail. Um, I bred a lot of them. They'll always, to me, uh, probably be my favorite. I uh, really only started getting into killifish in the last year and a half um, more, and I plan on breeding more 
uh, they're not difficult. Uh, I really enjoy more of the uh, annual or non-annual semi-annuals, but uh, not that I can't breed the the annuals, um, but they do breed uh, differently uh, in that sense. Um, and it takes you know six to eight weeks before embryos will start going through the stages if it's done appropriately. Uh, the best source that I can tell you guys, um, if you're looking at, I, I have, it's one of my largest view videos, I want to say seven, 8,000 views, uh, which isn't a, a ton, um, and I'm not trying to sound unappreciative, but um, it's, it's one of the larger ones here on the channel. For my channel, for the size it is, that's not too bad, especially for a informational breeding type video. Um, even if you look at, if you search right now through YouTube, I'll be willing to bet my video will be the first one that will pop up or within the five, within the first three to five slot um, or spot mark uh, when it comes to like keyword phrasing and that type of stuff. So if you put in uh, killifish, uh, if you put in orange uh, leer tail killifish, if you put in F. simian, if you put in um, even with the rice fish like the Aresius guare, uh, there's a few thousand views if I remember right on that video as well. And uh, it's pretty cool to see that because, I mean, the editing in it, I'll give it a 50%. I mean, it's not, the information's there. People enjoyed it uh, with both of them. Uh, it's not the greatest uh, lighting, but my biggest hope is the information is there for people uh, more than the video aspect. It's just because lighting is just a a big, big challenge to deal with uh, in fish rooms. If, if I was just a normal daily vlogger, my life would be so much easier on YouTube. I can just walk around with a camera, be outdoors, you know, whatever it might be. But when you're trying to do instructional and informational stuff, maintaining the information, maintaining the right thought process, trying to get the information out there, because I don't, I don't have a teleprompter. It's a pet peeve of mine. I call it individuals who clearly read off from, you can tell just like a news person, they're reading off from like a teleprompter or a TV screen. I'm not doing that. I'm going strictly off from memory. Uh, if I needed a, a source to go to or something like that, but let me get back to what I was um, on topic You know, check out um, uh, David Ramsey he, he does a phenomenal job specifically with the uh, um, uh, What variety uh, the blue Galaris um, and he has uh, uh, culturing of like white worms and grindle worms and I also have some different videos uh, on my channel with some culturing but uh, he's he's a he's a veteran uh, of course and been in the hobby for a long time and he he does some uh, really really nice um, instructional stuff uh, if you guys want to check it out uh, it's very raw and that's what I enjoy I enjoy that more uh, than a lot of edited type stuff. I like to see the transparency. I like to just kind of see how it is. It's just my style personally. Not to say maybe someday I might change that style. I don't know. Right now, I'm just sticking with it. Um, there's a couple questions. Do you have golden panchax killies? Um walk over there and take a look. I think I do. Remember? Not when you have 110 plus systems. I did at the beginning of the summer. All right, so I do have the Funnel Penchex Gardener Eye Gold Variety. Um, I couldn't remember because I know I lost a pair, but that was on me. I put them outdoors and it, I shared this already. I'm not gonna go through it again. Um, I ended up losing $500 worth of livestock uh, in 24 hours. Um, ended up losing a lot of the stuff I picked up at the American Live Bear Association. Trust me, I beat myself up over it um, enough already. So. I uh, didn't realize it spiked, and they used to say um, in one night it, it went from 70s to 95. Um, it, it was just a brutal, brutal summer here in Michigan. 
And when I checked the uh, the tanks the next day, I mean, there was there was no life left. I mean, um, especially a lot of the uh, the Goodyears and uh, Limias and uh, specifically the Achilles fish. Uh, but yeah, it, it sucked. You move on though. I didn't let it discourage me. I, I feel the worse for the the livestock than more for from a monetary point of view. Because um, like, nobody likes to see you know something like that die, especially when it was a risk that I took in the first place. Where do you get your shipping bags? All right, so shipping bags uh, we get a group uh, buy through our club. Um, if you leave me a comment after this is uploaded, I'll give you exactly the link. I'll just, I'll copy. Actually, what I'll do, um, make it better for you. Once this is done, um, probably in the middle of the night, because I got to finish up what I'm doing here once we conclude this. And then I'll go through and add any of that information for you guys in the description. Um, I don't recall, there's Uline, uh, but I'll have to obtain, because uh, I don't do the ordering. And uh, I, I can't think of it uh, right now, uh, unfortunately. But if you just Google um, like uh, fish bags or what's the other one I'm thinking of? Completely lost my train of thought. But yeah, just Google like shipping bags. outdoor breeding, outdoor fish keeping? Uh, yes, that's what I was just sharing is we had the 300 gallon stock tank, everything went phenomenally well in there. Um, didn't, didn't lose anything from there. A lot of this stuff right here is actually in that 29 gallon. That's just a portion of it, a lot of the offspring. Uh, we got some giant denus. Uh, I got a Goodyear in there. I got one of my uh, uh, Philip Barbs. Um, I got some golden banjos, uh, some long fin in there. The majority of those I've already sold. Uh, I got some handlers and uh, some celestial pearl banjos. I think that's it currently in this system. Everybody's saying hi to Jeff though right now. Oh, Jeffro's in the house. How you doing, buddy? We'll see you in uh, one week. From, I don't remember when you're coming in. Uh, it's either Friday or Saturday. Where are we at time-wise? 43 minutes. If I even went back and edited this, I guarantee you there's probably at least 100 ums and ahs. I'm spent. Um, again, I just did it. But, uh, yeah, I can't even. Sorry, I wish I was a little bit more uh, energetic, but when I'm the one that's facilitating stuff, and it's not just me, but it's, um, it, it, you know, as far as like a club and stuff, leading up to it, it takes a lot out, you know, a lot out of you. Last time you flooded your fish room? Yeah. Uh, flooded the fish room? Oh, it's been a long time. Uh, the recommendation that I have, and I, you can come over here and show them. So you can order these off from Amazon in packs of three or four. This is uh, Instapark. I'm not being paid for by, but they work pretty well as long as you don't drop them in the stock tank. So even though that's that's a suction cup on there, I wouldn't recommend that. Uh, that's one of the downfalls, I will say. Uh, suction cups don't work the greatest. But you can stick them right on, like, especially utilizing a stock tank, if you show them this part down here. It comes with this attachment, and then it comes with an adhesive backing. 
like a two-sided uh, foam backing here and then I just put it at what level just above where the overflow so the overflow is right here obviously as you can see yeah so that's that lies on all of our so this is our uh, reverse osmosis deionization uh, 55 gallon drum uh, RO units here and then our other reservoirs with the 55 gallon that I use and I've talked about that sorry uh, I talked about that before is uh, back in the corner of the fish room uh, out of the way you can't see it but that's where I have everything ran through like a carbon block and what it does is after I use like a remote system so to do top off see if my kids can do it they can just go around do top off by flip of a switch and uh, so everything in here besides the two stock tanks is not automated so I don't have anything through automation and I don't have anything through continuous trip I will go more into detail I have video ideas I want to do specifically what I've been doing through the years what works and what doesn't work and I want to kind of save some of that to the 19th. So once I get the ambition to actually start putting out edited content, that's why I'm showing my son here, trying to get him used to holding the camera, then that will motivate me. It will take out one of those steps in the equation because I'm not going to hire an editor. I can do it. I just don't actually care to do it. But, uh, yeah, if I can take out one of the steps and then I might have a little bit more ambition to start putting out some more produced content for you guys. I know a lot of you guys, of course, here uh, enjoy live stream. That's why you're active in the live stream. But the majority of YouTube wants produced content. That's just the reality. Do you recycle DI resin? DI resin? Are, are you talking about wastewater? Well, that's what this... Uh... Could be EL, but um, so wastewater from the reverse osmosis. So the re, uh, reverse osmosis system, any of the wastewater actually goes into the turtle tank, and that's what we use. Uh, they're very, very engaging. They'll eat right out of your hand. Do you recycle cans? Who's asking that? KG. Do I recycle cans? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I tried to. Not perfect. It's funny because if you go to Ohio, uh, back in my old profession years ago, it would be us folks from Michigan that would show up to a meeting uh, or a training seminar, and we would have uh, like a spot like we're literally putting cans on top of the normal trash can they're like what are you doing and uh since we are a state that has deposits um on cans uh which is 10 cents here but it's pretty much foreign to a lot of people that aren't aware of that but that's more or less a motivation for people to not just trash it but i do do my best to be a good component to the ecosystem but i'm not perfect if I would say that I recycled every single can, that would be a complete lie. Where are we at time-wise? 49 minutes. Man, it seems like we've been going for an hour and a half. Any other questions at all, you guys? Uh, if you have any... Uh, any other questions? Like I said, we can, I don't mind uh, doing an hour live stream. I kind of wanted to take a little break from this anyway. What did you eat today? Is Kevin asking that too? Maybe, yeah. Yeah, that's Kevin. I need to sit down. What did I eat today? So today I didn't have much. Um, I've been uh, pretty much going through like a cleanse. So more protein. But 
yeah if you guys weren't aware I uh, used to be big big into fitness but fortunately uh kind of kind of hindered in that department um, Dwayne asks how is your back doing um hell as always uh just being brutally honest um the last few days has been just super brutal uh speaking of that i will let you guys know ahead of time um we're working through the process right now of possibly going through uh something that i don't want to go through um it's a risky process and i definitely will be out of commission uh, it isn't it is technically a surgery, but it's not a surgery as you guys know that no I'm not going to share my story, uh, but for the folks that are aware of it um, it, It's going to be a, a, a An induced uh, ketamine infusion and I've talked a little bit about it before uh, I'm not going to go into a lot of the details on it, but there's always um, adverse issues that can potentially happen when it comes to uh, that type of procedure so I have uh, specialists in that that are looking into it to figure out the appropriate approach. Um, but basically, the easiest way I can put it is they put you into um, kind of like a mini uh, induced coma, and they slowly induce this infusion over, let's say you show up at 8 o'clock in the morning, and then you'd be released in the afternoon, and they observe you, and then you would come back, and then oftentimes you would have to repeat the process, but not only from a physical point of view because of my neuropathy and neuropathic uh, conditions with permanent uh, nerve damage, complex regional pain syndrome, bilateral radiculopathy, and the list goes on. Uh, I know that those are big words, but unfortunately I've been dealing with it for eight years. Uh, I could basically at this stage talk with a specialist the exact same lingo. Uh, I've gone through multiple surgeries, back surgeries. Um, having a neuromodulation unit installed, um, spinal cord stimulator has done me absolutely zero use, actually causing more issues. So, yeah, uh, it's been uh, completely brutal uh, over the last several years, uh, even from a psychological point of view. So, we're looking at it from a psychological component as well as from a uh, neuropathic point of view. So, if we can join both of those hand in hand, where they can work together for the greater good, then I'll have to ultimately make that decision if I'm going to head, go ahead at this point in my life to proceed uh, with that procedure. Um, but, yeah. So, I'll let you guys know beforehand because I can almost guarantee it. Uh, I will be out of commission for a bit, but I just won't leave you guys hanging. Um, I know that how, I know how it is, especially in a tight-knit community. If you're kind of out of commission, for a little bit, people start getting, generally, they start getting a little bit uh, concerned about what's going on. But I wouldn't just leave, leave you guys in the dust, like, what the heck, you know. So, I'll definitely keep you guys posted on that. Okay, thanks. That has, like, ten questions. Sharpie or Bix? Um, white meat or dark meat? Tenders or nuggets? Alright, alright, all right. hold on. Um, so, Sharpie, uh, white meat, just because it's more lean. Uh, dark meat, you know, of course I like my steak every once in a while, but if I had to choose one or the other, of course more lean meats. What was the other one? Uh, tenders or nuggets? Tenders. Uh, ketchup or mustard? Ketchup all day. Uh, well, it depends. Mustard, just because I'm a health nut, theoretically be a little bit healthier for you, but if I had to pick one or the other, ketchup. Blood or crits? This one was from Jeffro. Blood or are you talking about the gang? I don't know. Um Yeah, that's a whole other story. I won't go there. You guys don't know that part. And no I wasn't affiliated with any gang. Somebody asked earlier, uh, what car do you drive? Uh, minivan. Kia. Okay. 
Jenk says, uh, Joel tell them how he spelled Crips like that. Um, do you plan on buying a lot of fish? Uh, for the auction, no, because I'll be running behind the desk uh, majority of the day. So, uh, yes, I will have some feelers out there, of course. If it's something that I need, uh, because I am picking up a few groups of goodies that I talked to you guys about before next weekend, and then we'll see what else I end up picking up. Um, and then I'll also be at the um, Ohio Sickness Association Extravaganza next month. Uh, which is in November, and um, looking most forward to that. It's just kind of my time to get away from everything for a weekend. Um, I usually try to do that once a year, just kind of like I just go and and, uh, and and do it because it's a it's a wonderful opportunity. Uh, it's basically a swap meet on steroids. Is the easiest way I can put it. Hey, uh, KG wants to know your license plate number and social security. That I will not provide. Um, is there a way to speak with you about the experience with your Nero module unit? Who is asking that? Um, Keith Bordley. Um, I've helped somebody else, a couple of people in the community. If you want to message me, Keith, I don't mind talking with you um, about that. If I'm kind of anticipating, uh, I don't want to make assumptions, but I don't know if that's kind of a direction that you're leaning or maybe for somebody else. But I can do my best to, to give uh, my educational guidance on that. I, I don't want to persuade anybody because there's a lot of details that I will not go in um, here. It would just take too long. But... Yeah, I mean, if, if it can help kind of give somebody a um, on-hand perspective, if that's what I'm looking for, then sure. I mean, you can direct message me um, if you are on Facebook or on Instagram. And on Instagram, the link is down in the description below. So if you direct message me on there, it's probably the easiest. Um. If you could banish one YouTuber from ever making a video, who would it be? I'm not going to go there. Okay, um, when selecting a breeder, how do you know what time it is? Say that one more time. When selecting a breeder? Yeah, how do you know what time it is? Or from day. I don't know what that means. When selecting a breeder, how do you know what time it is? I don't know if that's a joke. Fifty-eight and a half minutes. All right, you guys, about a minute and a half, and then we're cutting it off. So, a couple more questions. Just gotta get your questions in. It's a sump. Down there. Uh, all right. Let me let's flip this around. You got a five dollar super chat from, from Pam fifty four punchy. Thanks so much, Pam. I definitely appreciate it. Again, you guys. Um, this is actually all shipping. Back here, I, I'm gonna do uh, for you guys at some point. Like I said, I have lots um, complete new here. I'm, again, the orientation throws me off. Yeah, if you don't mind holding that, that'd be awesome. Dwayne, I'm getting yelled at. I call him Uncle Dwayne. Um, I'm getting yelled at. Told me to get back to work and get stuff done. I'm paraphrasing. 
somewhere in Ohio. Is it Strongsville, Ohio? Let's talk about the OCA. What are going... Okay, wait a minute here. What? Oh, um, more of the treasury aspect of it. Lacey's place. Hello. <laughs> Palmer is wondering how he gets six uh, sixteen inch Flaco uh, in his ten gallon aquarium. You have to shove that bad boy in there. Yeah, I use magic and shrink it. Uh, let's see. All right, you guys. Thanks so much, Pam. Thanks so much for all the moderators. Definitely appreciate you guys very much. And, yeah, so hopefully you can somewhat take something away from this. And, yeah, just kind of want to jump on here. I wasn't planning on doing it, but, again, you guys know me. Impromptu, that's the way I fly. And with that being said, you guys, as always, stay encouraged. Keep on keeping on with happy fishing. And we'll talk to you guys probably on Sunday or Monday. I'll bring you guys an update, let you guys know how things went. If any of you guys are coming tomorrow, uh, definitely uh, look forward to uh, meeting anyone. So with that being said, we'll talk to you back here on the next one.